Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're working on Get to Know My Neighborhood, Block 11. And I've had some beautiful critters coming and saying hi to me as I've been hanging out here in the quilt shop. And this one has popped up several times. So it's a beautiful hummingbird. Uh, I have it near some flowers here because it just, you know, putting it in my shop door doesn't make any sense at all. So I have it with some beautiful flowers here and just a couple little leaves and then some clouds in the sky. So we're going to we're going to work on that one. So I did use a uh, three t colors for the hummingbird. I used a pink batik head and then a textured with like some leafy sort of print for the wings with its, which is black and then a very nice bright green for the belly. Uh, and then I did some purple and some pink flowers and then of course the clouds in the sky. So, okay, so here we go. There's, there's our piece that we're gonna use for our cloud. I did get uh, all the little flowers except for a couple cut out and I got my little leaves heart part there too. So let's let's cut out the last of our little flowers here. Okay. And then we'll start laying it out. So yes, they've they've come to visit several times. So and it's not just one, it's a couple. I've seen them flying about. I've also at dawn and dusk have experienced bats. So that's been very interesting. Certainly getting to know my neighborhood. Excuse me now, spring, is, spring has sprung here. <laughs> you can probably hear the birds in the background. There we go. And I just kind of drew out a nice little basic um, lilac flower petal. I think that was kind of what I was going for inspiration wise. Because it can always get the nectar from the tiny uh, part of the flower. So, and it did them really rough. They're not all the same. You want them different. Mother Nature is different. And you don't always have to cut out exactly what you've traced. If you find that you've found you made a mistake, you want to like the, the petal a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, then, you know, that's where you're, you're free to do it at that point in time, right? So, okay. So there's those two cut out and we will take their paper away so we don't forget that. Nothing worse than when you get everything set up and you just press it down and you forgot to take some of your papers away. Whoopsies. Okay, so that should be everybody there. So let's set our hummingbird up first. Let's move our little flowers and our greenery off to the side. So we want to have our body first here. And then of course we want our head to be attached. And of course I gave the body a bit of a wave so it would look like the feathers were settling from the neck. Okay, and we just kind of want to make sure we're putting in relatively the same-ish position of this one. Okay, and then we've got the wings to stack on top of that. Okay, and it goes right, right at the base of the neck and on the back of the body. That's pretty much where they are going to go. Now, we want it to go towards the flower. Right, so let's let's build out our little purple flower first. And the reason why I chose purple first is because the pink I thought was too close to the pink of the color of the head. So I moved the pink off to the background and kept the um, the purple one closer to the beak or the bill. Is it beak? Bill? Oh, what would it be? What would it be for a hummingbird? Now, don't forget with this project, this this. Um, um, Get to know my neighborhood project. You have to leave a comment below because we're going to be giving one of these uh, quilts one fin once finished. Uh, one could go to you and one's going to go to me. So it would be nice to be able to have something similar and we could share it. And if you leave a comment below, you get to be put into the pool. Okay. So we're just kind of laying our flowers out just, just a little bit. We, we can draw. I used a black marker to draw little lines in between there. You can mix up your flower colors too. They don't always have to be uh, purple. They can be any sort of beautiful color that you would like. And of course, I just 
I, di I just did like the basic shapes of a hummingbird. I just, okay, well, the head kind of goes this way and the body kind of goes this way and the wing kind of goes that way. So, and, and did it that way. So, and, 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 to, and to note, it, the way you draw it on the back of the paper is going to be reversed at how you're going to see it. So if you want your birds flying off to the right or to the left, you have to make sure you take that into consideration, okay? All right, so I think that's looking pretty good there. Now we're going to trace out our little cloud. So what I did is I did one big cloud and then just kind of cut it in half. Okay, so I just kind of old school, just did the little fluff, fluff, fluff all the way around. Okay, and then what I did is I cut it out. Sorry, let's go this way. Because it doesn't have to be an exact science, you know, you have you have the freedom and the flexibility to to change in any way you like. Okay. Because I wanted two clouds, and I was like, okay, well, I want them kind of similar in shape and with some of the same color that's in this one. So I did it like that, and then I just literally came in the middle and just did that little part there, and then on this part. I just went and rounded out the edges. There, just like that. Peel off the paper, stick it where you want it. Move that there. Move that there. Move over there. I think I actually like to put a little bit more curves in here, okay, and then a little bit more of a curve, there we go, that's a bit better, and same with the underside of this one, it's just a little too smooth, so let's go, got it coming up, let's go down, let's go up, and back down. There we go. That's a little bit better. A little bit more movement to the cloud. And they don't have to be as big. You can have them so they're going off the block. Whatever makes you happy. I do keep all of the rest of these little bits that have maybe some heat and bond on it. You just never know when you're just going to need like a little beak or an eye or anything like that. So once we're happy with where everything is, okay, let's move our little hummingbird body back. Okay. A little bit of foliage. They're about as similar as they're going to be. And then we can press. Okay. Now you can accent. Now this is just a heat and bond project, but you could totally accent this any way you like with stitches, with accent stitches, with embroidery, with embroidery floss, just regular thread, buttons, beads, bows, ribbons whatever it is that you would like to help accent your piece of uh, of your block okay now because i'm getting to know my neighborhood but so you're free to get to know your neighborhood right so and i'm sure you got hummingbirds where you are there's hummingbirds are pretty much everywhere so now i want to do is i want to make a nice eye i have a nice little permanent sharpie marker here and i know the eye is approximately right about here so i'm just going to draw like a little rough circle and then i'm going to color it in Okay, to give the eye. And then I also know the beak is darker. So I came up and did a line down the center and then just did light shading on either side of that beak. And then I also came in and highlighted right around where the neck feathers meet the body feathers. And then right down here, just kind of put in a couple little feety feet where it's all tucked up against the body, right? Okay, and then from here, from the leaf, draw a little line to the one flower, one flower to the next, and to the next, as they dangle from the beautiful trees. And you can just do that like there, okay? And then if you want, you can add some accent of a couple little, you know, the V, the normal birds that we've been doing with the black fabric, you can do that with a little bit of a Sharpie marker, uh, whatever makes, makes you happy. Um, it's just a matter of, 
being inspired by why, what you have around in your neighborhood and how you can make some very interesting and colorful blocks. So even if it's just a gift for somebody who maybe doesn't see that part of your neighborhood, you know, you got kangaroos bouncing around or something like that, you know, and they, you would like them to, to do you an applique of a kangaroo and then you, they mail it to you or something like that. And I think that would be kind of cool. So this is get to know my neighborhood block 11. And remember you have to put, leave a comment below for every single video. So make sure you do you do so. It doesn't have to be something about the project. It could just be, hey, how are you? Um, especially if you've got nothing else to say, it's okay. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. We greatly appreciate you here at the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. We hope you're having a fantastic week, and you're going to have an amazing weekend. Big hugs to you, and we will see you real soon. Take care.